Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Whatever time it is that you are with us, we are grateful for the presence of your consciousness as we celebrate yet another day of being together. I'm Reverend Therese Lee. This is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. As you're so moved, go ahead and put your name in the box. Tell us where you're from, if you have a prayer intention or a prayer request, as well as any other email information you may want from us. You may reach us at Unity of Hilton Head office at gmail.com. Let us start as we do in unity, moving from our head to our heart space, closing our outer eyes as we're comfortable and breathe into this now moment of prayer together. Living, loving presence, thank you. Thank you for the internet that allows us to connect with all of these souls at this now moment all over the country. Thank you for the opportunity to mm, question our thoughts, to understand how we live and to be on purpose. We know that we are guided as we take time apart, like we're doing today, to listen to the inner knowing or what we call the wisdom. We allow ourselves to be in tune and in focus on what is our intention and attention. Celebrating the manifestation of peace that fills our heart, warms our soul each time we take a moment to go within. We allow ourselves to be divinely guided by the wisdom that exists in through and as us in all that we say and we do and we be. We pray this in the name, after the nature, and under the authority of the living, loving presence that is you and that is me. And so it is. Amen. Open up your eyes again. Go ahead. Put your hand up on the screen so we can feel your energy. Thank you for being with us today whatever day it is. Unity is about the practicality of living each and every day. We do use Jesus of Nazareth, right? The historical Jesus as our way shower. How did he live? How did he manage to live amongst all of the chaos, seeming chaos? And how is it that we get to live today? Following the great example, that's what we think rather than the great exception. So the 12 powers are fundamental to each of us in our being, having this human experience all the while being spiritual beings, right? So they're aspects of our divine nature and they remind us that we are divine and we live from our divinity along with the humanity, right? The weaving in of the beautiful tapestry we call life. Humanity and divinity woven together, showing up as you and as me. So what I like about the Unity teachings is they help us develop a method of using things and, and showing up the best that we have come here to be today in this now moment. It's a system for the growth of our soul that continues to evolve, our consciousness that continues to evolve. To remember that the faculties, the attributes, the freedoms, whatever we call them, there are 12 and they reside within us and there's nothing we have to do to get them. We just get to call them forward again and again. And again, as we remember that we've forgotten to remember that we are, in fact, all this. They allow us to transform our sense consciousness, right? That of what our humanity is into the higher consciousness, which we call the Christ consciousness, the highest level of loving as we live on this earth. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to call forth these 
uh, powers that reside within us, these faculties of mind, faith, understanding, imagination, will, power, zeal, and love. Today we're going to talk about wisdom, and that resides in our solar plexus. So the bottom line takeaway every single week, every time we get together, God is, we are, I am. Say it with me. God is, we are, I am. Not just our inner circle, y'all. Everybody. We is the collective we of the world. Rumi has a quote that says, you are the truth from foot to brow. Now, what else would you like to know? Are you willing to embrace your divinity and live from that, knowing it has nothing to do with the ego? So the affirmation for today, and we'll take it in parts, I'll say it first. Today I affirm my light of wisdom allows for all the amazing blessings on their way to me. Now on their way to me. Let's say it again together. Today I affirm my light of wisdom allows for all the amazing blessings now on the way to me. And when we pray in this affirmative way, now we claim it to be so, we see it as so, we know it from the gut of us that it is so. The light of wisdom has the attributes and the power identified as judgment, discernment, and intuition. Everybody breathe. We all have these. We don't have to take a special class, have a special training. We get to call them forth. Scripture for today is from Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26. With humans, it is impossible, and to God, all things are possible. You know I love words, so the very word impossible, when we unpack it, says I am dash possible. I am possible. Say it with me. I am possible. Everything within us that we want to see to make manifest is possible. As long as we're using our wisdom and discernment, right? The judgment faculty of our mind is it for our highest and best good, especially during this time of Lent where we let go all that no longer serves us. So as you and I touch the fount of wisdom that is within us, it allows the operation for the light of us to shine even brighter. Paula Darcy says, God comes to us disguised as our light. right? God comes to us disguised as our life. How is your life? Is there drama? Is there peace? Chaos? Rest? We get to decide and then know that in the midst of whatever the situation is, there God is. God is, we are, I am. We get to know, and this is what unpacking this power of wisdom is all about, knowing that we have a life partner always and in always in God. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, Therese, I'd rather have one physically with me. Okay, that's all right. And in the truth of life, we have ourselves and we have a relationship with the God of our understanding. And this is what we get to remember. God showing up as our life. We get to follow what I call intuition, the guidance or the unspeakable knowing, right? We have this within us, our unique, unrepeatable GPS 
or what I call the God Presence System, GPS. If you're taking notes, you might want to take this down. The God Presence System. Now, we have the one that's in our car. Do we know we have one within our own selves in this body temple from which we live? It transcends the physical and emotional aspects of being. Right? God presence system. Metaphysically, Fillmore tells us wisdom is a spiritual understanding of our truth. It's the very gut of us. Everybody breathing? It's quite exciting to unpack and understand that we have all of this within us. Most of you know that I'm a big proponent of living in the question as the question, being the question, and following the work. That's the title of Byron Katie. And it melds so well with unity. She gets to us by saying, question everything. Remember as a kid, you were told, mm -mm, don't question. Well, I'm inviting you to engage your childlike nature and in fact, question everything. Question what is which then allows us to release and let go the false beliefs, the one we've made up, right? Our belief system is identified as what? BS. And all the stories we've made up about what's developing or what's happening, all of those drama aspects, let them go. Question yet again, what is. So as you and I engage our wisdom faculty, which has nothing to do whether or not we have gray in our hair, it's an inside knowing. Clarity, focus, allows ease and grace. Let me say it again. Clarity and focus allows ease and grace. Nia, um, Maria Nemeth is the one who taught me that back in the day. So the ease and grace then allows for us to have new possibilities emerge through us and as us and allows ourselves to discover yet again that we are possibilitarians, right? This is who we've come here to be, to live in the possibility, to call forth the possibility which is what all of Jesus' teachings were about. Possibilities, right? Living into all of those possibilities that you and I are. And then it allows for us to quit and step away from making stuff up, right? Do the work. Ask, is it true? And then unpack it from there. We engage in this question, the judgment, the discernment, and the intuition. Each time we take a moment to question, set ourselves apart for a moment, become aware of the quiet that's available, being still and knowing God is, I am, we are. Everybody breathing? Are you willing? Are you willing? Each time we move from our head to our heart space, or what we call metaphysically the intellectual being part of us, to the loving part of us, we engage these systems within us. We turn on the lights that express as us. And it engages, yet again, our GPS, the God presence system that resides within us. We come with it. It's loaded in at the factory, so to speak. It's not an added on item. The GPS within us then out pictures through us as wisdom, as wisdom. 
Fillmore says, Myrtle Fillmore says that it is a quality of being wise rather than being intellectual or emotional. Again, taking away the boxes of good or bad and the names that we label things, always and in always being balanced is a good thing. Breathing into the emotion, breathing into the intellect allows the wisdom to be engaged. Charles Fillmore, our co-founder of Unity with Myrtle, says, it's the way our spiritual growth is worked out in our consciousness. Each time you and I enter into the quickening of our judgment, quickening, and seek to conform our ideas to those of divine mind. Divine mind is that mind within each of us of God. We have our little M mind, the monkey mind, the mind that thinks it knows everything with a small K, the ego mind, right? But we're looking for us to conform to the divine mind that engages the divine wisdom that is inside. You and I get to remember in the busyness of life around us, whatever's on TV, all the news, whatever's happening in the neighborhood or in, in the church building, we are of God. We are the hands, the feet, the mouth, the eyes, the very physical presence. That's why we matter. That's why you and I are a gift. James Finley said this. I love it. The greatest teacher of God's presence in our life is our life. My favorite saying is, how am I supposed to know? How would I know when someone says whatever it is? Of course, I appreciate you. How would I know? Right? Actions, words. So the GPS within us helps us to be being the actions we want to be that match the words we've spoken. Are we willing to engage, right? What we forgot is we got, you know, we went into school, right? So you become a toddler. Now you're going to school. Then we finish our all of our education and Maybe we have a family and then we have jobs and join the church and we're busy, busy, busy doing. We're busy doing. And what we've forgotten is that we are supposed to be busy being, human beings. Are you willing? Up until now, we've done this. Reverend Mary Madden Morrissey says that. So are you willing to allow that to be what has happened up until now and then go forth and be who you've really come here to be? To remember we have within us our own unique GPS, our God presence system within us, that as we engage it, as we spend time with it, we, in fact, allow ourselves to have wisdom in all of our affairs. We remember that God is our forever partner, the presence always and in always around us, yours and mine, our partner for life, what we call God in unity which is this knowing, this innate knowledge and wisdom that is us. So right now, with all that's going on in the world, your own inner world, right? Look around or outside. Engage your wisdom. Use your judgment, discernment, and follow your intuition or your guts. We know. Time to release during this time of Lent the doubt and the fear and step into the knowing. 
the gut, right? Something I didn't learn that I had until I was 30. I didn't know what all that was because I did not know myself then either. And that's what unity taught me when I joined, when I was 28. And so I would say about the time I was 30, I realized, oh, that's what that is. It's my gut. Charles Fillmore calls it the presiding intelligence at the center of us, knowing what is going on within us, especially, Fillmore says, in the domain of our consciousness, which is the awareness of it all. There is a Cherokee leader talking to his young grandson about life. And he says to his grandson, there is a fight going on inside of me. And the little boy looks at him with big eyes, big eyes. And he said, you know what, grandson? It is a terrible fight between two wolves. One is the call for love. He is angry. He is envious. He's sorrow filled. He has regret full of greed, arrogant, has so much self-pity, riddled with guilt, lives from resentment, lies. He has a false pride. He has a superiority about him. The grandson's eyes are getting bigger and bigger. What is the other wolf? He asks his grandfather. And the grandfather says, the other is love. Filled with joy, living from peace, loving, hoping, has a sense of serenity, a great amount of humility, filled with kindness, so grateful, lives from empathy, practices generosity, knows truth, is so compassionate and faith-filled. Again, the little grandson's eyes are so big and he's like, okay, grandpa, what else? And he says, well, the fight is going on inside of you too, grandson. And the grandson puts his hand on his chest. Oh no, grandpa, inside of me? And the grandpa says, yes. Well, which one's going to win? Which one's going to win? Which wolf will win, Grandpa? And the elder Cherokee, filled with wisdom, says, Grandson, the wolf that lives is the one you feed. We talked about this last week. A call for love or a action of love. How is it? that you are living. Calling for love by being angry, being dismayed, or living as love, grateful, humble, practicing kindness. So the moral, the elder Cherokee says, let us make sure that we are spiritually feeding ourselves through times together like this book studies, the people we surround ourselves with, the belief systems we let go so we engage after questioning, things that nourish our souls. Everybody breathing? Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, says in the book, an old book called Christ Enthroned in Man, which we would say now, people, every soul has free access to the source of wisdom within. As we approach you and I, the divine source of wisdom that resides within us, we begin to realize our oneness with it. Imagine. And we find that we are evolving a higher intelligence than that of the intellect, and that we are learning the greatest of all sciences, the science of mind, 
the divine wisdom that resides within us, the essence of goodness as us. Fillmore says, as we really live into this perfect relation to principle, we shall have the power to combine ideas rightly in the world to make manifest wholeness in our thoughts, as our actions, through our words, and as we see another. We see the wholeness and the perfection, maybe not liking their actions. However, we can see the truth of everybody as divine. So close your outer eyes as we take a moment together in silence and in meditation. We breathe into this moment, closing our outer eyes, pausing and going within. We allow ourselves to feel the divine wisdom that is flowing through each of us, that energizes us and renews all areas of our life. And we breathe. We affirm that this is our guidance. The system within us that is the spiritual compass as us. And as each of us applies this inner wisdom to the decisions we make through discernment and judgment and intuition, we are choosing wisely our words, our actions, our beliefs. All that we hold in our mind to meet that of divine mind. We breathe into trusting this divine guidance within us, this God presence system known as wisdom that lives in each of us. And we breathe into the allowing of our goals and desires to illuminate the path in front of us. We breathe into the gratitude at the core of us that allows for us to step into and up to all that we are called to be. We breathe from the center of us, centered in spirit, allowing ourselves to be spirit led so that our decisions are made with the wisdom and the confidence as us. We allow ourselves to be clearly and purposefully guided with the wisdom from within that is ours to do and to be. Our inner wisdom guides us and we bless others. And so it is. Amen. We breathe again, open our eyes, share your energy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking time apart. Thank you for your practice of generosity on our website, www.unityofhiltonhead.org, where we have on our front page a practice generosity button that we push. We are grateful. Snail mail to P.O. Box 1392, Bluffton, South Carolina, 29910. Your gifts bless us to do the will and the work that is ours to do as Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Live from your wisdom. Let your light shine. We are grateful. I am grateful. Amen. Reverend Therese signing off.